All righty. Good morning, everyone. This is Monica Olson from the State Board. It's now 11 o'clock on the dot, I believe. So we'll go ahead and start our meeting. Welcome to the August CTC Link Accessibility Open Forum. Uh, before I hand it over to my colleagues in IT, Sandy and Chris, I do want to let everyone know that we have a professional CART transcriber with us here today. So if you need um, captions for access, please click the CC button on the bottom of your Zoom, Zoom screen to enable that. Um, feel free to message me privately in chat if you need additional access assistance. Um, we are scheduled for an hour today. I ask that people do their best to keep their microphones muted when not speaking. Um, and then please unmute yourself when you have a question or comment to share. I will do my best to help moderate the chat since I know when folks are speaking and presenting that can be a little hard to do both. Um, and the other thing I'd like to encourage folks to do during this meeting is before you unmute yourself, before you share your comment or question, please um, introduce your name and which uh, institution you're from. And that helps everyone just keep track of who is talking throughout our conversation today in case someone um, can't access the name on the screen. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to share up front. So thank you for being here. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Sandy. Thank you, Monica. Hi, everybody. Again, it's Sandy Dane at the State Board Office, and I'm so glad we're all here. And I'm having um, lighting issues in my room again, as usual. So I have Christopher Soren's team here, and he's running the slide deck for us, which I think is great. So Christopher, would you mind advancing to the next one so we can see the agenda? Thank you. So we do actually have a very packed um, topics or agendas that we want to go through, agenda items. So I'm going to really just kind of turn it over to Christopher and let him um, go through and talk about some of the current activities that's going on. The majority of the work does come out of his team, and that's our application support um, section of the application services group. They are the primary developers, engineers that do the technical support for CTC Link. So we'll have him do an update. And he's going to go ahead and, and have a conversation about how process or what the process is when we um, have um, accessibility issues. So there's kind of a three pronged or pronged approach. But anyway, he will go through that. Um, and he, I think he did an amazing job um, go, uh, discussing that. So it's going to be a really good conversation. We do, we'll try and allow some time at the end for questions and answers from the group, which I think is such a great way to interact. And let's, you know, kind of get those things. And it gives us a chance to kind of come back and uh, always either improve our process or find answers for you. And we'll go into college sharing. We did have one um, agenda request that came in this time. We believe we've answered it offline, but if we have time, I'd like to open it up for discussion. And that actually has to do with mobile and high point HCX. So um, if anybody has anything new, like Monica said, she's monitoring chat. So please feel free to put in some ideas that you want to get covered either at this meeting or the next meeting. We'll make sure that we get those addressed. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Christopher and have him go have some fun with this stuff. Thank you, Christopher. Good morning, everyone. I'm Christopher Soren with the State Board, the Application Support Manager. I have the privilege of working with the, all the developers here and the application support team. So since uh, so some of the activities we're working on right now, um, the OAAP, so the vendor has fixed most of the issues. And uh, Josh, could you give us a little more detail on, on that one? Hi, this is Josh Jiha from the State Board. Um, so just talking to uh, CAS Tech is the vendor for the online admissions application portal, um, which we call OAAP. And um, in the most recent 
um, um, set of updates that will be going into uh, production. They have addressed uh, not necessarily uh, some uh, showstoppers, but improved on uh, some ARIA labels, like with the side menu before it wasn't announcing when it was expanded or collapsed. They've improved that as well as the um, account sign out uh, pop out. Um, that they've improved some functionality with that as well. Um, and then they've also uh, ad addressed a couple issues that Level Access had um, brought to them a few months ago, but they, uh, they were more systematic and uh, more to how their, their mean stack was developed. So they had to find out some dig deep and and to address some of those issues. And they are uh, hoping to have those developed in, in, in front of their um, VPAT that they're working on. And that's about it for that update. Christopher, this is, can I jump in? This is Sandy Main. Go for it. Um, regarding the VPAT from uh, CAS Tech on the online admissions application portal, but as many of you may know that it's really hard to find third party vendors that have the capacity to do the VPAT. So they are um, really trying to get a third party to do that work with them. So it's taken a lot longer. I think the last time I talked to him, he's reached out to two or three different um, areas. He is trying to, or they are trying to engage with level access to do that. So. Um, just wanted to um, let you guys know that it is very important to Castech, who the vendor is, uh, to get a good VPAT. And um, it's taken a lot longer than um, we had hoped and they had hoped, but they are actively working on it. Thanks for letting me interrupt. That's good. This is Christopher again from the State Board. Hey, everybody. So we are continuing our. our Regular meetings with Oracle to discuss the. This is Andrea. How may I help you? Oh, Andrea, sounds like you're. Oh, there you go. <laughs> sounds good. Um, so, the so we're continuing those meetings. Um, one so one thing of note since last we had uh, the appreciated Monica and um, and and Doug was able to join us in the last call uh, with with Oracle. Uh, we brought in. The, the their vice president of HM development and Oracle came in to give us some updates. Um, and on I have a little more details on the next slide. Get that uh, slight delay. Oh, looks like another mute. <laughs> All right, yeah. So another thing that we're continuing um, is our is the the HCM uh, accessibility monthly focus group calls. And one of the nice things to know is that uh, we're not in this alone. Uh, we're in this big boat with a bunch of other. Uh, people, all the PeopleSoft users across the world. Uh, in particular, I, I have a list out here of all the people that are joining us on those calls. In addition to the state board, Harvard, King County government, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, University of Michigan, uh, University of Massachusetts, uh, Missouri, uh, Indiana University. So there's all, and some other companies as well. So they're also joining on the calls and, and expressing concerns around accessibility and CT ceiling. So it's nice to know we're, we're not alone in this. And we're, and and the, and the fact that we even have these monthly forum calls that uh, didn't exist until just like three months ago. So, um, I'm I'm hopeful about continued progress uh, on on all these fronts. So, since, since new since last time, uh, Oracle has for the CS Academic Advisement Report. So that's a a PDF output report that has readable text but isn't correctly tagged so you're not going to get that proper flow or understand the structure of the document if you're using it with a screen reader and so new since last time um oracle's agreed there's a problem they're going to work on a fix uh, and it's coming with uh, cs image 24. they have requested a prp see if we can get that sooner uh, but that's sometimes it, it takes a lot of back and forth in our service requests with oracle they ask for like business cases, replication steps, trace files. Um, uh, we, we sometimes it can take like a month or more of back and forth before they even agree 
that this is an issue and that they need to fix it. So it always feels like a win when they, we come to that point. Uh, and we'll, we'll be looking to get that in the system as quickly as we can. Um, the incorrect tab order for uh, purchase orders, uh, that fix is coming in uh, the finance image 41. Um, and to come to the back to the W2 PDF piece. Um, so this has been uh, long in the works. We've been going back and forth with Oracle for a long time on this. So you can access all the information uh, online, uh, but when you download that PDF, uh, it, it's not readable by a screen reader. It doesn't have the proper tagging structure. You can read some of the text, but it's not an equivalent experience. Uh, and for a long time, Oracle wasn't really telling us why they, they, they were kind of being caged with this third party was, they, they weren't able to fix it because of a third party. And so it turns out that the third party, they finally told us was RR Donnelly. And so RR Donnelly delivers the W2 PDFs to them in a locked inaccessible format. And so the uh, Russell, uh, the vice president, uh, the, I took on the last slide, uh, he leads those monthly forum calls. So he reached out to R. Donnelly. And so they have some artificial intelligence on their side to get that PDF output and uh, as, as accessible. Um, and so since this slide deck was made, I got a, I got a new update um, from, from, that, from Russell, the vice president of Oracle. He said he spoke with them uh, just yesterday and they've committed to providing us a tag PDF. Uh, to test in their in Oracle's development process. Um, so they, they expect that'll be within the next week uh, that R. Donnelly will get that to Oracle. And then Oracle will take it through their development process to see what kind of results they have. So they may need to make some modifications within PeopleSoft to, to make sure that output comes as, as fully accessible with uh, you know, WACAG 2.1 AA uh, guidelines, make sure it meets that those, those standards for that output. Uh, but that's this is great progress here. This has been a long time we've been trying to get the, make some movement on that, that W2 PDF for making sure that output is tagged correctly. Um, so we are making progress on that front. Hey, Chris, this is Monica from the State Board. Can I jump in with mm -hmm. a question from the chat? Um, well, first I wanted to just say thank you so much for all the work you and your team are doing and for this update and for inviting, you know, um, me to join that meeting with our Oracle. I did want to just emphasize for the group that we all felt like we all left that meeting feeling a little bit more hopeful than maybe in previous moments and that the Oracle team was was listening to us and Doug Heyman, um, you know, um, joined us as well. So it was just a great example of collaboration across the aisle of different teams at the state board and including a college voice at the table as well. So thank you. Um, the question in the chat is from Debbie. And I think she her first question is about the the other schools and groups that are part of that monthly meeting. Um, you know, Harvard was on the list. And her question is, are these groups that have already deployed with the with them um, with Oracle or are they using CTC link or whatever they're calling it live. Yes, they're all years into their deployments. That's what I thought. Microsoft. Okay. And then the second question that she's asking is she's curious if there are accessibility lessons learned around accessibility that might help with the items Oracle is not addressing. So um, are the group sharing different accessibility lessons or workarounds during those meetings? So uh, pieces of these meetings are big chunks are they're talking about all the Oracle showing us all the things that are coming um, in, in future images or a lot of these things are at the tools level. So uh, they're, they're showing us some of the things that are coming in people tools like A59 has a bunch of promised accessibility fixes. A5714 had a bunch of promised accessibility fixes too. They didn't deliver as much as promised. Um, but uh, we're hopeful that that comes with that 859 um, that we'll get to someday and hopefully deliver on their promises. Um, and so sometimes it's too, it's going through like scenarios, like where would you expect the cursor to be or the, the focus to be on this page with this? Um, so they're, they're like, this is how we code to standards. Do you agree this, this works? And so there's, a, there's certainly some back and forth. Oh, it's a, I'm getting some feedback. Is somebody unmuted?
Okay. I'm hearing a lot of background noise. I think somebody's maybe unmuted. Um, so there is not a specifically, uh, a, to address your question specifically, there's not an accessibility lessons learned document. Um, it's, it's, it's mostly conversational and trying to, to make progress on these things. Like the, 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 this W2 thing was brought up uh, a couple of times um, and that helped, it's better. <laughs> that helped make some progress too. We were not just the only ones asking about it, having all these other groups ask Oracle, um, I think put some additional pressure on them uh, to make, get some movement going. Um, so th there's no specific lessons learned document that, uh, that is shared, that, that, is, that they've made available. Um, so the, uh, the next piece there, the absence balances and requests at absence PRP, so the PeopleSoft release patch set was applied to production on July 20th. So now when you go and check your absence balances, it doesn't just tell you that you have 47 hours of what? I don't know. <laughs> now it tells you this is sick leave, <laughs> vacation. So that was great to finally get that through and get that into production, so yay. And um, there's also a, a report time issue uh, that is an ACM, and that's going to be coming in image 39. Transition to the next slide. So was there, actually here before I move on, was there any questions about where we're at with these items? So, Chris, this is Monica. I think mm -hmm. you're to continue. Okay. So I kind of want to talk about our process. So we kind of have a three-pronged process for dealing with accessibility issues. Um, and on the slide is a link to details at the end of the slide deck. So I wrote out a full text version of everything that I'll be mentioning here, uh, which is great for a review afterwards, or if you're just cruising through the slides, uh, but also be talking about it here. So we have a, a proactive approach, a reactive approach, and a continuous approach. So. I'll start with the, the, the proactive piece. So anytime Oracle releases a new image, they have a list of all the bug fixes that come in the image and they tag them as accessibility. Now, some of the previous images, they haven't done a, a great job with the description piece, which we've talked about them and with our monthly calls, hey, can you add a little more in the description? Sometimes they'll just say accessibility fix on this page. And we're left digging through the code to try and figure out what fix? Was there an ARIA label added? <laughs> what, what, what happened <laughs> with, with, to make this page more accessible? Um, and so we're, we're, we're checking all of these bug fixes to see if, to see what the changes were, to test to make sure that they are actually fixed. Um, and if they aren't fixed, then we're gonna be opening up a service request with Oracle saying, hey, you said this was a fix, it doesn't look fixed or we're not seeing any change on this page. So it may have been the bug fix was incorrectly tagged or something. So we're, we're looking through all of those and testing those. And as part of that image overview document that get, gets published with each image update, we have a whole accessibility section and we're, we're listing out all of the changes that are coming. So we're, we're testing all of these things. We're looking ahead at before these images ever make it to, uh, to production, uh, we're, we're looking at them and, and proactively making sure that these bug fixes and these accessibility fixes are uh, fixing what they say they are and, uh, and that we know what they are as they're coming through. Um, we also have uh, a reactive approach to so where we get a, a service desk ticket saying that this, there's a particular problem. And so we're gonna investigate that. We're gonna, we're gonna look at the code. We're gonna uh, work, work with you maybe uh, to get some clarification on it and uh, and then we're going to, if it's a, so there's a couple different ways we go about this. So if it's a delivered page, which is something Oracle gave us, we're going to go back to Oracle and we're going to say, hey, Oracle, please fix this. So we open a service request with Oracle, do lots of back and forth, hopefully get them to agree there's a problem and that uh, a fix will be coming in a future image, or we'll ask for uh, a, a people soft release patch set, a PRP or a proof of concept, a POC. We prefer the PRP over the POC, but uh, we'll take a fix anyway, we can get it. <laughs> um, and, and then we'll see if we can get that introduced into the, into the system a little earlier. 
or if it's a totally custom page. So this is something that uh, there's a Kindly for, uh, we're gonna go ahead and work on that development ourselves. And we're gonna, we're gonna fix that accessibility issue that's been reported to us. Now, anything that's coming out new, uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're checking, obviously this is some more like a, some old thing <laughs> that we found. Again, it was implemented in the system years ago, we're, we're, we're updating. Um, so, but mostly we're, we're, we're making sure the Oracle is fixing the problems. Uh, because we don't want to break the warranty in the page. We want we want them to keep them updated and make sure that everybody has those those accessibility fixes. Um, so once we get those into our development, we we uh, we do that all in our development environments. So we take the fix from Oracle, or we, we fix the fix ourselves in our development environment. We're going to test it with NVDA. We're going to test it with JAWS. We're going to test it with Chrome. We're going to test it with Firefox. Um, and then we bring it in once once we've done all that. Um, we're going to bring it to our testing environment. So we're going to work, so our testing team uh, works with our different functional teams. So whether this is uh, issues in CS or finance or HCM, or di different teams are going to be involved. So we're going to do some regression testing around that because we don't we want to make sure that there's no new bug that got introduced. Oracle sometimes likes to introduce new bugs with their bug fixes and then have bug fixes for their bugs fixes. <laughs> so we're going to want to make sure it doesn't break anything else and it actually does fix what it, they said it was going to fix. Um, and so we're going to test that with uh, NVDA, JAWS, Firefox, and Chrome. We're going to make sure uh, we're going to run the wave toolbar, make sure there's no contrast issues. Um, so we're really, um, you know, running the gamut on the testing, making sure everything is good. Um, and then at that point, we're going to bring it to our uh, quality assurance environment. And our testing, so our testing team will then work with uh, whoever reported the issue at the college and make sure that it's actually fixing the issue that they reported was an issue. And then we're, and then it, it, after all that testing is done, um, if anything needs to be fixed again, we're gonna bring it back to redevelopment, bring the fix up all the way through this process again. Um, but if, if everything's working, everything's good, once it comes to that QA environment, then we're gonna bring it into production. Um, so there's been lots of thorough testing done to make sure that this doesn't break anything. This is fixing what it should. And, uh, and whether that, would be through Oracle or uh, the, the custom fix that, that we might be doing. Most of these are, are stuff that's Oracle has delivered. Um, and so this is the same process for any fix that we work through, uh, any code changes that we're doing in the system for all the other tickets that we're working as well as the, the accessibility ones. So this, this, is our, this is our same process. So that's our sort of an overview of our reactive process. Um, and Maybe we, in all, and through this testing, find some other issue that we'll open another Oracle SR on. So our our engineers are also looking at that. Um, and there's also the continuous piece. So you know we continue to meet with Oracle monthly, where uh, I meet with them and our and our developers as well. And we're talking about where the status is on all these service requests we have going. What information do they need from us? Uh, where where are they at with it? Is it with the development team? Is it do we have a fix coming? Uh, as we're talking through all those to make sure that, that everything's there's no miscommunication and we're continuing to make it as quick quickly a progress as we can. Or we're going to bring in other people like when we came to talk about the W two PDF. Um, so so those are as well as our uh, monthly HCM focus calls. So that's sort of that that continuous piece where we're learning about what's coming. Where we're discussing with all the other PeopleSoft users, um, as well as directly with Oracle in those in those in those small calls with just the state board and, and Oracle. So we're we're tackling this in three different ways. Um, and please continue to let us know if you if you come across any issues in in, in the system that are accessibility related, and and we'll tackle it. Um, PeopleSoft's a big system, not omnipotent. <laughs> So we do our very best to fix everything as quickly as possible. But uh, if there was if there was something you caught um, that you saw, let us know. We'll work on it. So let me head to the next slide. All right. So is there any is there any questions on this piece? Kind of how all the different ways we we work through all these fixes. Okay. 
Chris, this is Monica. Thank you for taking the time to go in greater detail about the process that your team and colleagues use to look at accessibility and test fixes and communicate with Oracle. I think that this is the, um, really helpful and perhaps the most amount of detail that um, folks have received in a while. And so it helps just kind of paint that picture more completely of the behind the scenes work. That's great, thanks. This is Sandy, I'd like to jump in and remind everybody that um, all the information that Christopher covered is available at the end of the slide. Like he mentioned, um, it's more of a, a write-up, uh, all the different areas. And it's, um, again, it is the same process we use for um, our the release schedule and everything. This is no different. We try and keep it standardized and use the same measures and um, testing, uh, additional testing, but the same process makes it easier to get things through, the, um, through the, all the different environments. So Christopher, you did an amazing job. Thank you um, for that work. Thanks, Sandy. I want to make sure everybody has an equitable experience in the system. Yes. <laughs> it's important yes. to me personally, yes. <laughs> as well as everybody at the state board. So well, we just, you know, we continue every time. But as you say, Oracle likes to fix a bug with the bug, and um, you know, it always it isn't as clean as we would hope to. But I think they're really trying to get better at it and they're making the effort more i mean you just see a dramatic change in their way of doing things i think since you know from a year ago you know they're more um open and they're listening more so that's amazing that um they've changed their changed the way they do business so thank you all right, so uh, this page is on college feedback. So um, Amy at Shoreline did ask about an accessibility comparison between HCX and the full CTC link. And so there was a little bit more to her um, request and it had to do with the configuration of high point mobile HCX. Um, and so we addressed those issues with her offline, but I wanted to leave this topic out there and talk a little bit about it, but also to see if there was any um, questions from the group. So it's kind of difficult to really compare HCX to full CTC link because the reason why we went or went forward with mobile high point or High Point Mobile, sorry, going backwards, um, was because it's a better user experience. So it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison. So it, um, you know, CTC Link is probably a little harder or a lot harder for some people to navigate, um, whereas HCX is, is better user experience. But um, HCX does address the accessibility. And I'm going to say it's not 100% because I don't think any you know, this is pretty basic hello world kind of web page. You, you have um, accessibility issues and HCX or High Point does release fixes um, and we're continuously monitoring and, and will apply um, any modifications they make or, you know, enhancements they make. So one-to-one, -one, there really isn't a way that we can do a comparison on accessibility. CTC Link is accessible in a lot of ways and so is HCX. So that's the best um, we can do, but I wanted to kind of bring that up, see if anybody had any questions. Uh, this is Josh from the State Board. If I can ask you, I want to touch, touch on that and, and add um, my experience with testing CTC Link and High Point or HCX. I would say that the biggest difference as far as cons is, uh, accessibility goes is HCX is more consistent. We found that there are some differences in user experiences, whether you're using JAWS in Chrome or in Firefox. And those, and there's a consistent difference between um, NV, NVDA in JAWS and how uh, you're able to get more functionality out of JAWS and in, inside of Chrome than you are um, with NVDA across both browsers. Uh, so I would say that HCX kind of eliminates that difference. It makes the user experience consistent 
um, amongst both browsers and amongst the different uh, screen reader app um, softwares. And it also um, eliminates the need to turn on the screen reader mode. So we found that um, some of the usability issues with um, screen readers are eliminated in CTC link when you turn on screen reader mode, but it can actually cause some visual issues if you turn on screen reader, screen reader mode while using high point. It changes labels, I noticed, and this was over just the past week, actually, I, I, I found this out. So um, I'm still digging into it. I'm just getting back off, of, coming back from vacation. But those are some of the things I did notice um, as far as HCX and um, accessibility with CTC Link. Yeah, screen readers do work. Um, this is answering Debbie's question. She's asking. Uh, for clarification, if screen readers work better in HCX, yes. Um, JAWS and MBDA work um, better in HCX um, across um, all browsers. This is Monica from the State Board. Josh, thank you. I just wanted to quickly add that a couple of weeks ago on uh, the 22nd of July, uh, another colleague, Drake, at the State Board um, gave a Two hour training uh, live in Zoom to folks interested across the system on um, key functions inside HCX Mobile. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it was really well done, very useful. We had almost 100 people attend, and that recording um, is available now uh, via YouTube link, and I've sent I've sent that out to the councils and listservs that I'm a part of. And I've also shared that with Josh and Drake so that they can continue sharing that recorded training as well to others who are who might want to review those materials. And that's that's my comment. This is Sandy, the State Board. Uh, Josh, thank you so much, because when I was my mind was focusing on like a one to one kind of page to page that it's really hard but that that different look at it is um, why we have these forums and have these kind of conversations so thank you. So if you go to the next one, the next slide Christopher. So um, that was the, the one um, submission that came in through the online submission form. So I encourage people to continue to to do that. And it also what it does is allows us to, um, you know, do some research so we can have really good answers and, uh, you know, responses for you um, when we do meet. But I'd like to open this up, if you're good with that, Monica, to have colleges kind of if they have questions, because the rest is the standard um, stuff in our slides. So this is where we'll just turn it over to the group and see if they have any questions. This is Sandy again, you don't need to be shy. <laughs> oh, good, Mark. We can, um, Mark, the URL is off of the, if you go to the CTC Link Accessibility webpage, but we can get you the direct link to the form. Whoever posts it first is the winner today. And I give up because I know the rest of the team is super fast getting uh, links out there than I am. <laughs> Monica wins.
This is Monica from the State Board. I know sometimes when there's a lot of content and information, it takes people time to chew on it and contemplate before um, you know what you want to ask. Uh, so it's okay if we don't end up having follow-up questions right now during today's meeting. And certainly if we do, we've got the time. Um, but as you as you continue to soak in this information um, and or review the slide deck that's uh, up online, if you find yourself having additional questions or comments, um, certainly you can always you know reach out to me directly. But the submission form via the link I put in the chat would be a great place to share follow up questions or comments that we can respond to. This is Monica again from the State Board. So I, I, I don't want to assume that there aren't questions out there, um, but I am going to take the silence as a, as a hint that maybe people are still just thinking about what they heard today. Um, so in, in conclusion, oh, I see a question in the chat from Marissa. Can you go over the areas that are more accessible in screen reader mode? Hi, this is Josh from the State Board. Um, to answer that question, so it not really in the uh, areas that the students see, the student facing um, parts of CTC Link. It's more so in the staff pages where you have the classic um, pages. Um, I don't know how what your position is um, at, at your institution, but if if you've been able to to see a difference in the layout um, between different interfaces where one looks a bit newer, more up to date, and one kind of has like an an older look and feel. Um, that would be the the classic page, and in those areas is where the screen reader mode has the most effect on it. And the reason given to us by Oracle was before Fluid was created, uh, which is like their responsive design, they did all of their um, accessibility work separately from their other pages. So that's why there is a, a, a screen reader mode. And that screen reader mode, I guess, has been developed over the last 20 years. And so they haven't ported all of that functionality into what they call the fluid design. And so the fluid design is mostly, is what their most public facing pages have been ported over to. And we've been told that there isn't a huge push to push over any remaining classic pages into fluid. We don't know um, if this is going to, to continue, but um, is when we do run across accessibility issues on a classic page with screen reader mode turned on, we do report, report those and those fixes are continually being made and pushed through our, our PUM and image updates. This is Padma from uh, SBCTC. So most of the user facing, uh, user facing pages are fluid and uh, that is the promise of Oracle that anything that is uh, employee self-service, manager self-service um, facing that, that will be, that is screen reader friendly and accessible. And uh, the pages that are less accessible are the setup pages and admin pages, which are not used by front-end users frequently. But they, they are working on the, uh, making them more accessible. 
there is something called as classic plus which is uh, tools delivered a different kind of paradigm where the classic pages can be uh, made more more accessible and usable by just changing the template from the setup in the system so they are actively working on it and also regarding ideas uh, page that monica and sandy was asking for oracle actually has a um, page for ideas where if you if there are some ideas that you uh, suggested on the for the future accessibility ctc link we can actually create uh, those ideas ideas which oracle considers for enhancements uh, by taking votes from uh, different customers so if you suggested some idea and if we post that on oracle's ideas page and other customers can also vote on it and if most of the customers want that then oracle takes it up for enhancing their software And if you're looking for an, this is Josh from the State Board. If you're looking for an example of a, a classic page that was not really as accessible, and then they updated a version of that page, uh, if you're if if you're in financial aid staff, um, the financial aid ICER pages from 19 and 20 compared to the 20 and 21, you'll there is a difference between being able to keyboard navigate and then some of the labels are um, on one of the deeper pages that you have to select a link on um, within um, the ICER component. This is uh, oh, go ahead, Mark. Oh, okay. I was going to address Debbie's question in the chat. You go ahead. Nope, that you go ahead. That was what I was going to draw our attention to next. So I defer to you. That <laughs> sounds good. So Debbie's question was that if some of the issues can't be fixed, will the development of the workaround training docs be up for each college? Is there something in the works at, at the state board that could be accessible, access in the reference center? Um, so the only issue that I run across the Oracle was being particularly sticky on was the W2 PDFs. And I just didn't take no for an answer and kept pushing on that one. And, uh, and so <laughs> We got we got some movement. I mean, it wasn't just me; it was a you know, team effort. <laughs> um, and, but the, so there hasn't been an issue yet that we've run across where Oracle said no, we won't fix it. So I'm not aware of an issue that can't be fixed. Um, and well, if you're aware of something, then we'll we'll work on it. <laughs> we'll investigate it. Uh, this is Padma again uh, in our customer focus group meeting. Uh, I, I brought to their notice some classic pages that I know that our users are using extensively. So though they said that classic pages are not uh, accessible, when I raised and mentioned that this is what is used by most of our um, user base, they said that I can open an SR and they will uh, consider it for fluidizing that page. Fluidizing means <laughs> making it more accessible and nice looking, <laughs> easy to maneuver. Yeah. So uh, what Christopher said, we don't take no for answer. <laughs> Thanks, Padma. This is Monica from the State Board. Um, Follow-up question from Marissa. Um, have timesheet approvals been fixed for accessibility? Excellent. Uh, but this is Padma. Yeah. Excellent. This is the page that I mentioned to them. That timesheet is a big issue to us. It's a classic page and most of, most of our users love to use it. And uh, though you're telling us that classic pages cannot be Fix. We want this to be used. They said there are alternative versions of fluid pages available. I said yes, but they are scattered, and in timesheet, every all information is on one page. 
so it is the most convenient so they they said open an sr and we will consider it so we will be following up on, on that and hopefully <laughs> i don't know the timeline but it i they will take that up it's my hope for sure there's also a a bug related to the comments on the report time page and it, that bug is uh, the bug fix is slated to come in hcm image 39 <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Monica from the State Board. I think there's um, this is all really great information, but I also think maybe folks are getting a little confused uh, because some of the terminology is is new. Um, so, I Chris, maybe could you take a step back and redefine the difference between a classic page and what the issue is re uh, regarding a classic page versus the the newer, uh, I think, responsive design pages that jo Joss was beginning to give that clarification. I, I'm just seeing some follow-up questions in the chat that let me know um, there's still some confusion going on. Uh, this is Padma, I can take this question. So classic pages are the original uh, tools, original pages that were developed many, many years ago. <laughs> we used to call it Adam and Eve time pages. Uh, so they were, they were based on a technology that time that couldn't really handle many of the new things that we, we currently use. So uh, for example, labels, um, labels or the way the tab order works, or the alternative way of presenting the page for somebody who is using screen reader. These kind of things were not available that time. So those, so those old pages are called classic pages. And when the, the tools developed, when the tools made improvisation to the tool, tool means is the background platform on which development is done. So that was upgraded. And then ever since after that, whichever pages were developed after that, they could use this technology of using various labels that are suitable just for screen reader users or making adjustments to the pages. So they render better for the screen reader users, ch changing contrast styles, which were not available in the old pages, they are now available. So those pages, which they, they are called fluid pages, uh, but the old pages, there are uh, so many of <laughs> old setup admin pages are there because PeopleSoft is a vast, application, if you see that how it spans through finance, uh, campus, it seems it is, it is a huge application. So there are many pages that are still classic, but most of the user front facing pages, they redevelop those on the latest platform. And that is what those redeveloped and the new ones are called fluid and the very old ones are called classic. So this is Sandy at the State Board and re reading Debbie's comment about DG6 that will not have access to Classic since we are not live yet. Actually, you are right. Classic is the older versions of the, of, or, or is the older way they delivered pages and then Fluid is the new format, but there's they're mixed together within PeopleSoft. So in CTC Link, um, self-service is predominantly Fluid based. So um, those are the pages that are most highly accessed by people. So that's where the concentration on um, upgrades are happening from Oracle. Classic pages are more of the administrative functions that happen behind the scenes. So you have a smaller base of users, but um, there, so those haven't been updated by Oracle. So you will, DG6 will have both some classic looking pages depending on 
um, your job on campus and we'll also have a lot of fluid for self-service. So I hope that helped explain the difference. So they didn't just flip the switch. They're doing kind of page by page um, uh, improvements in PeopleSoft. Thanks, Danny. This is Monica. And so to, to be clear, the circling back to Marissa's question about timesheet approval, timesheet approvals are on a classic page, is that correct? Therefore, accessibility remediation is, is a little bit more complex. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, this is Padmayas. Timesheet uh, page is a, a classic page. It's an old page. It is not, they, they improvised it, but they did it in, a, in such a way that they took small, small pieces and presented it as separate pages. Whereas what we would like to see is one page <laughs> that has all the functionality in it. So we, we are going to request that. Yeah, does that, does that answer the question, Monica? Padma, this is Monica, thank you. Yeah, that helps me understand a little bit better and I hope it helps answer other questions as well. So thank you, Padma. Yeah, thanks. Well, to summarize, whether it's a classic page or a fluid page, we're still going to ask for an accessibility fix. So <laughs> wherever there's a problem, well, we're going to work on it. We'll work with Oracle. This is Monica from the State Board. Thanks, Chris. So I think we're at a, a good place to wrap up and end our meeting. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We really appreciate your participation and I'm grateful to Padma, Josh, Sandy, and Chris for providing such um, good information and updates and for working so hard on improving accessibility and user experience and for including me too in your journey. And um, so I look forward to continuing to partner with you and provide policy support wherever I can. And thank you to our colleges for uh, working with us and communicating with us and letting us know when you have questions or concerns or when you find things that are not working. We um, really appreciate that feedback and need that feedback. Um, so our next accessibility open forum is scheduled for September 14th, same time, 11 a.m. to noon. And with that, I'm gonna say goodbye and end our meeting.